comic supervillains are quite the twisted individuals with some warped ideologies and ambitions. Some straight up just enjoy the thrill of crime and the chaos it births. They have no short list of hobbies and kinks like the love of causing others pain. Masochistic, you might say. Then there's the greed for wealth and the insatiable hunger to constantly have more and more wealth. It is quite obvious to even the most novice of comic goers, a whole lot of the most powerful evildoers in comic universes are worth quite a lot of moolah. And their bag is big and deep enough to run entire nations and or of course elite corporations. And finally there are the characters who have lived so long they've had nothing but time and opportunity to amass their net worth. We always hear about the superheroes and how they flaunt their cash, but now it's the villain's time to flex and pop some sh From the rulers of the criminal underworld to kings of their own nations, here are the top 10 richest comic book villains you probably didn't expect to run up a tab. Number 10, Red Skull. The World War II Nazi and Hydra's notorious and renowned is first up. Red Skull's low-class, humble beginnings as a bellman in Germany certainly didn't reflect on where he is presently. During World War II, Nazis often confiscated the wealth of anywhere they conquered, and Red Skull definitely had his pick of the booty they requisitioned. That's been a minute ago, but with all the treasure and property that was in his possession, he could liquidate it whenever he needed to. The chosen leader of Hydra, a terrorist organization that's been the world's disarray since World War II and has ties to political and business leaders globally. With that kind of power and influence, he definitely is not shorthanded on finances or resources. Pinpointing Red Skull's exact wealth might be impossible, but our findings place it a little below $1 billion. Number 9 is Mystique. Mystique, the super dangerous, shape-shifting mutant spy who could be anyone she wants to be. Hell, we wouldn't know until the writers let it be known, but you might not have thought she had a bag big enough to make this list, even with her expertise at espionage. I mean, no moral code, and she could be anyone you want to be. I'm sure everyone who's built like that would be wealthy. And we've not even factored in slow aging, so that's a cherry on top. She's got a lot of time to stack up her bread. Mystique has lived the lives of magnates, industrialists, and tycoons, including Byron Biggs, a billionaire with international interests. Through her many dealings and her other identities, she's accumulated assets and investments in a number of top corporations. Mystique has been contract killing, swindling, stealing, and investing for over a century now, and she's got the cash to prove it. She's probably stashed it away all over the world in bank accounts under many names, but Raven Darkholm. With a net worth of $1 billion, she takes our number nine spot. Number eight, Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul, the man who helped create Batman and the founder of the League of Shadows. Quite possibly one of the most dangerous and resourceful villains in the DC Universe. His constantly extending lifespan plays a major part in that, and he has used all that time pretty wisely. He spent several lifetimes building his vast fortune. As the most famous head of the League of Shadows, Ra's al Ghul has enough wealth and resources to topple entire governments. When he isn't trying to destroy Gotham or destabilize governments, he's collecting jewels, treasures, priceless art, and antiques. But perhaps his greatest treasure is the Lazarus Pit. Imagine he posted a sign for sale on that. How much do you think it would go for? Wonder how he'd sell the manic side effects from prolonged exposure, though. You really can't pass up on immortality, can you? Anyway, a villain like Ra's al Ghul, who understands just how fickle fate is, has built enough wealth to accomplish his ambitions. Ra's, just like Mystique, has a net worth of over a billion dollars, and that's more than enough to manipulate world events to his liking, fight Batman, and enjoy his spa days in the Lazarus Pit. He's lived much longer than Mystique, and that's pretty much earned him a higher spot than the deceptive mutant. In Batman Birth of the Demon, we're given a rough figure of about 500 years for Ra's age. Mystique, on the other hand, is just over 100 years old, and that's one heck of an age gap. Number 7, Vandal Savage. Immortality might just be the secret to unfathomable wealth. Savage, like Ra's al Ghul, is one devious immortal who has had lifetimes worth of time to get rich on several occasions. Vandal Savage is literally somewhere around 100,000 years old. To put it into context for all of you, if he spent his entire lifetime only putting away the equivalent of 10 bucks a day in any form of wealth, and its value didn't depreciate at all, he'd still be a freaking billionaire. However, Mr. Immortal here has spent millennia losing and acquiring more wealth than is possible to imagine. With vaults of priceless artifacts that he could convert to actual capital whenever he wanted, it's hard to put a figure on wealth of such a scale, but we've estimated his wealth at around two billion bucks. That might not seem like a lot for someone who's lived hundreds of thousands of years, but here's what we know. Whatever Savage's actual net worth might be, it's way more than enough to get him a spot on any list. Consider the fact that he has probably lost more wealth than he has gained in his immortal life. 
Number six, Sebastian Shaw. Mr. Shaw is one of the less popular X-Men villains and you can't blame him. Names like Magneto, Apocalypse, and Sabretooth have often overshadowed him. Even his own ally, Emma Frost, gets way more played than he does. Nonetheless, Shaw is one powerful and extremely rich enemy of the X-Men in his own right. When it comes to wealth, he's not getting overshadowed that easily. He's called the Black King of the Hellfire Club for a reason. For some who might not know what the Hellfire Club is all about, it is basically an exclusive social club that's been operating for hundreds of years. The club only counts the most upper-class elite citizens among its members, and was created to allow the wealthy 1% to enjoy the pleasures that the general society deems rather distasteful. And Sebastian Shaw is a top-ranking member of this club for the 1%. That's how wealthy and powerful he is, but he wasn't always an elite. Raised in a poor family, Shaw was able to claw his way up in the world, becoming a millionaire at just 30 with his company Shaw Industries. After joining the Hellfire Club, he not only rose up the ranks, but he also took over the club. Shaw single-handedly bankrolls the Sentinel program. Do you know the amount of money it would take to do AI research and build massive mutant killing machines? Well, let's put it this way, the F-16 fighter jet way, way less complex than one of these gigantic robots, costs around $63 million by itself. Now we're talking about Sentinels, literal mutant killers. So the cost for just a single one of these is at least north of, you know, that. Shaw Industries literally mass produces these mutant hunters. Shaw swings it like that. On top of the big multi-billion dollar corporation he runs, he has his hands in selling advanced technology and weaponry to the highest bidders. Shaw's net worth should be well over $10 billion. Number five, Emma Frost. Scratch what I said earlier, being a mutant is the way to stack your chips. You can't talk about X-Men villains without bringing up the name Emma Frost. Emma, the white queen of the Hellfire Club, was born into a pretty wealthy family. You know, a life of privilege and all that, but it didn't last very long. Her family actually disowned her and she got a job dancing at the Hellfire Club. Thanks to her telepathic abilities, she was able to trick patrons to get a whole lot more money from them. But she isn't just a thief, you know. Emma Frost is also a hell of a businesswoman. Luckily for her, she still inherited Frost Technologies, an elite multi-billion dollar company from her father after he died. Emma eventually became the chairwoman of Frost International and used her badass business acumen, and probably some of her telepathic powers, to grow the company like crazy. Shaw was impressed with Emma and introduced her to the inner circle of the club, a move that only grew her wealth further. The White Queen and the Black King, how freaking convenient. With a net worth of over $11 billion, Emma is one of the wealthiest mutants and villains around. Number four, Kingpin. The saying crime doesn't pay, quite frankly, is a dumb saying. You won't get away with it is more truthful because crime definitely does pay, and our fourth spot is a shining example. One of the most dangerous, feared, and powerful crime lords in Marvel's universe, Kingpin, aka Wilson Fisk, rose through the ranks of New York's criminal underworld until he hit a level of success no other crime lord can touch. The godfather of Marvel's universe has even slowly become more of an above-board businessman. He controls a broad spectrum of legitimate businesses in every corner of the world. He's literally one of the largest spice dealers in all of Asia. How the hell did he even get the business idea? His tremendous influence and vast riches all led him to becoming the mayor of New York City. No surprise, corrupt political positions being what they are. So yeah, Kingpin is not just the most wealthy crime lord in the Marvel Universe, but also the most powerful. He's got a net worth of 40 billion bucks. Crime pays all right, and we got real life people showing us that every day. At number three, it's Lex Luthor, a baldy who, if he could convert his narcissism, ego, and jealousy into power, he'd have Superman looking like Usopp from One Piece but sadly he can't compete in power. However, thanks to his vast wealth, because somehow he still is able to be a thorn in the side of one of the comic's strongest heroes, Lex Luthor is known for a couple of things. His bald head for one, his hate for Superman, and his intelligence. But none of these should overshadow just how wealthy he is. Luthor, a once in a lifetime intellect, built himself up from the bottom to become one of the wealthiest and most powerful businessmen in all of comic books, just to turn evil. Lex used his wealth, resources, and natural genius to create the multinational corporation LexCorp. Founded as an aerospace engineering firm, LexCorp has become one of the world's most prominent and most diversified corporations. Lex has more money shelled away than a whole lot of countries, and has resources that even had Batman peeking over the fence at times. I mean, you gotta have a healthy bank statement to build machines and get the resources to attack Superman. Well, 75 billies definitely is making all of that feasible. Number two, Dr. Doom. The ambition of Tony Stark, the genius of Reed Richards, and the moral code of a honey badger. We present Victor Von Doom at numero dos. 
Doom has this wild notion that he's vastly superior to the rest of humanity, and in all honesty, he can back that ideology up. All his abilities and intelligence to creatively use it, Bro has the audacity to be wealthy. Not rich wealthy, and if you don't know, there is a huge difference. Many could argue that Dr. Doom is the most brilliant mind on Earth, and they wouldn't be wrong to do so, but his wealth is an ode to that. His immense wealth comes largely in part from his ownership of all assets of a small European nation, Latveria. As the ruler or king of Latveria, Victor Von Doom is sitting on a fortune in real estate, art, and a plethora of assorted assets. And to add insult to injury, his status as a foreign dignitary grants him diplomatic immunity, so his assets are basically untouchable by foreign powers. His own people fear him, so you can bet they aren't going to do a thing about his rule. With so much money and power, ruling the world is just another thing he must have completely. He has the budget to do it, and this man Victor Von Doom is estimated to have a net worth of over 100 billion bucks. With this much money and an entire nation under him, I say he will probably take over the world again soon. Number 1. Namor Now, the final spot of villain wealth you may not have expected, but probably won't be surprised about. While human royalty like Dr. Doom are extremely wealthy, they only control a very small portion of the Earth, compared to Namor, who rules over every single thing in the f ocean. And since 70% of the Earth is covered in ocean, I guess he kind of rules, you know, 70% of the world. Go figure. Not only does he control a vast cache of natural resources, but thanks to salvage laws, this mutant god owns any sunken ship in his territory, which, again, is all of it. Centuries of sunken treasure, all different kinds of ores, and Atlantean advanced tech are all controlled by Namor. Again, what's with mutants and being so incredibly wealthy? Besides all of his underwater fortune, he's also dabbled in corporate America as the owner of Oracle Incorporated. So to finish it all off, he owns a company on land as well as 70% of the planet. He's clearly bored. It's time for the big reveal. The wealthiest, unexpected villain has an estimated net worth of $260 billion. This list did not make me feel good about my financial situation at all. And with that, our list and video have come to an end. Money might really be the root of all evil. And Emma Frost, if you're out there,